Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trofan at the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Gwent Edge, the show where we talk about interesting decks to play around with. And today we're going to be doing just that. We're going to be talking about a Syndicate Prime deck that I had in the pipeline for last month, but then I had a death in the family, sadly, so I did have to take a little break. And then my cat starts to interrupt. Say hi. Say hi. Uh, so that means that we're going to be taking a look at it in this season, even though there's been uh, quite a few additions uh, with spicy cards. We're not going to be using any of them just yet for this video. They will be coming in to play in the next videos because we're uh, in full force. I'm on holiday as well, so I should have plenty of time to make new deck guides. So uh, stay tuned for that. But without further ado, let's head into the deck builder to take a look at the King of Crime deck. As you may have already noticed by all the Dijkstra's all over the place, this is a deck that uses the new Sigur Ruven Mastermind card. I say new, it's been like three months since this card was released, but again, I had to take a couple of breaks because of uh, an illness and of course that death in the family. So it's been a while since I've played a lot, but this deck is very, very powerful. It is focused on playing crime cards in combination with having as many different gang categories on the board as possible. Uh, I'm gonna go through each and every single card one by one to explain you how these work. If you're already familiar with these cards, don't hesitate to skip right to the example matches using the timeline down below. And you can also find this deck uh, in the description using the Play Grant link in there to just go to that website and then export it to your own game. First up, we have the Eternal Fire Disciple, still one of the most profitable cards in the Syndicate package. Three powerful four provisions gains you two coins. And for every coin that you spend, you spawn a two power Fire Sworn Zealot in this row. So you gain double the points on the coins that you spend, but it has a cooldown of one, so you can only do this once per so next up is the Mutants Maker. As I said, we're focusing on having as many different gang categories on the board as possible. Mutants Maker has two, has both Fire Sworn and Salamandra. Four power for four provisions and gives you three coins because this is a devotion deck. Next up is Eventide Plunder, still one of the best crime cards in the game to my mind. Four provisions and you create a four provision cost unit with fee. So you trigger our leader ability giving you an extra coin and then guarantee you have a, um, well, a fee card so you can spend your coins on that. But usually this also gives you the option to choose from two or three different gang categories. So even aside from that, you actually have a lot of options to increase your port state. Next up is Fist Deck. There's a double Fist Deck in this deck as well for profit. So four coins and you poison a unit. So double poison if you're able to pull it off. We also have a tutor to gain a crime card. So uh, definitely uh, a possibility to get double poison. And with even, even tight plunder as well, you can get the um, failed experiment, which also gives you some poison options. Then of course, double Shady Vendor. Shady Vendor is a blind eyes card for power for five provisions and is, um, well, very crucial in a crime card deck. Uh, only gives you one profit anymore instead of the original two, but if you put them on the melee row, you pay four coins for the tribute and create a bronze four provision crime. Uh, if you put them on the range row, you get uh, five tribute, but also a five provision crime. So um, I usually go for the four provision crime just because there's more interesting options in that range and there's a few uh, not so useful ones in the five provision range and then uh, one of the newer cards of five provisions um little bird five power for that five provisions is an agent but on deploy you infuse yourself at a gang category of a unit in your deck um best to play this early because of course the further in the game you are the less um remaining gang categories there will be in your deck uh, and on fee two so paying two coins, you boost an allied unit by one for each unique gang category you control. This could get up to six, possibly, but usually you'll get uh, three or four uh, quite easily. Uh, and this will just double up your coins as well. But also the little bird can only do that once per turn. Then a very powerful crime card, pulling the strings five provisions and it gives you six profit uh, because we increase the profit by one for each unique gang category in your starting deck, we, of which we have six. Remember that Witch Hunter does not count as a gang category. That aside, you also seize an enemy unit with zero or less power. That power is increased and the profit is decreased by one for each unique category, gang category you control. I feel like I'm gonna be um, having issues with the word gang category a few times in this uh, video. 
so if you have four different types of gang categories on your side of the board, you only get two coins, but can seize a four power unit of your opponents, which is a very powerful indeed. The maximum this card can do is six, uh, C6, six, so that gives you 12 points in total because you take away six points from your opponent and gain six on your own. Um, but other than that, this is still a very powerful card, even if you, for example, only have three gang categories, you gain three coins and you steal three points, so that's nine points in total. Then we have, of course, Sir's Cubertude, five power, one armor for six provisions, and has Intimidate 2, and if you pay two coins, it also gains immunity, which is really good. So Intimidate 2 means that it gains two points for every time you play a crime card. Then Tunnel Drill. Tunnel Drill actually got a very significant nerf you could say it's a bit double um so previously you could only do three damage for two coins if you've played a crime that turn meaning that you need to have this card on the board for one turn usually or you can get the combo that's in this deck as well and do that in the same turn but you needed to wait a turn before you could actually use the two fee damage by three but then you could do it unlimited well just limited by your coins well, right now that has changed to giving this card a cooldown. So you gain two coins, but you can use the fee ability immediately because the fee is now consistently two coins for three damage, but you can only do it once per turn. However, if you play a crime, you reduce the cooldown by one. So you could hit for three, play a crime, and then hit for three again, because usually the crime gives you coins anyway. So Tunnel Drill is still a very good card to my mind because um, it just gives you three damage on deploy and you can just keep going afterwards as long as this card lives then the conjurist candle is just there as it is uh, always in one of my syndicate decks uh, it's a really good location card that gives you four coins instead of the five from before but it's just a fee ability that is always there um, also gets resilience so you get a uh, carryover so what this card does is for every coin that you spend you boost the card by the coin count uh, that you spend it on plus one so the first time you spend the coin and you boost the unit by two after that the fee goes up by one so you spend two coins to boost the card by three and so on and so forth um not too complicated and a very very handy fee ability next up tavern brawl the crime that i really really like and depends on if your opponent is expecting it or not you force an enemy unit to duel an adjacent unit so you pick a unit, pick another one, and then the first one will hit the second one, and it goes back and forth until one of them dies. The ideal situation with Tavern Brawl, mathematics-wise, is that one of the units has two-thirds of the power of the other unit. And then, of course, you pick the lowest one first, and then it goes back and forth twice. Um, if you have shields on the board, that even gets more interesting. Usually you want to go for the um hitting the uh st still picking the lowest unit first but then hitting the shield so the shield basically doubles up the power of that unit so that's something you'll need to incorporate in your calculations there now we have furco the sculptor uh, crime tutor so two power for eight provisions is a crown splitters and on deploy you play a crime from your deck if you put on the melee row then we have Bard, also a newer card, 6 power for 8 provisions with 4 armor, so very hard to kill. And whenever you play a unit with a gang category you do not control, you gain a coin for each unique gang category you control. This includes the card that you just played, so if you play a Mutants Maker on an empty board with just Bard, uh, you gain 2 coins because Mutants Maker has Firesworn and Salamandra as gang categories. And then it just increases if your units stay alive. Then we have Horse and Senior. I rarely see this card being played, but I still really, really like this card. Six power for eight provisions has Intimidate, so gains a point for every crime card that you play. And on the ball, you transform an adjacent unit into a cut-up lackey. It's also the only cut-up card in the deck, I think. Uh, and the cut-up lackeys are four power, and whenever you play a crime card, you damage a random enemy unit by one. If you have two, you increase the damage by one for each. So two damage for every crime card or cut-up lackey. If you pay the tribute on Horse and Senior, you transform both adjacent units into cut-up lackeys instead, so gaining the bonded immediately. This can be part of a very powerful combo, because with Sigiruven we can play both Horse and Senior and a crime card in the same turn. Um, so yeah, we might be able to do that in the coming matches. Now we have Bincy, another card that I don't see played uh, a lot, but this is the only Tide Cloak unit that's in this deck. 
and has a very powerful ability that to my mind still works pretty well just to bait out some high tall removal from your opponent. So 4 power for 9 provisions. If she's on the ranged row, whenever you gain coins, you boost yourself by 1 for each coin you gain. So just she gains points for every coin that you get. Um, if you do that on the first turn, you immediately put it to 9 because you can use the Tiger's Eye stratagem to gain 5 coins. Um, so very hard to kill, but of course, tall removal cards uh, really like this card to hit. But she just gives you points passively, so I think it's still fine. Then as a Javed, our defender, it also gives you three Salamandra units in one go. So uh, definitely a keeper to gain that gang uh, category on the board. So five power for nine provisions, profit three, and on deploy you spawn a Scarab in this row. A Scarab is a one power, one armor defender. And if you pay the tribute with the coins that you just got, you spawn two of them in the row. So two very low power defenders, which you can boost, of course, with Conjurer's Candle. And now we have Collusion. Collusion is the card where this deck is uh, built around. So Collusion is a crime card for nine provisions. And depending on the gang categories that you control, this card does different things. Blind Eyes increase all the other effects on this card by one, so it doesn't do anything directly. But if you have a Crown Splitter, you boost an allied unit with the lowest power by four. If you have a Cut Up, you damage an enemy unit with the highest power by four, so basically syncing with the Cut Up abilities that we already have. For the Fire Sworn, you spawn two Fire Sworn Zealots in a random, in a random allied row, so giving you four points. And if you have a Tide Cloak, you gain four coins. If you have all five of them, you boost by five, you damage by four, you spawn three Fire Sworn Zealots, and you gain five coins because Blind Dice increases all the abilities. Very powerful card, and we have a specific tutor for this card as well, aside from the Crown Splitters, uh, so for Coder Sculptor that we talked about before. Next up, another tutor, Vivaldi Bank, Profit 3, and you look at the top card of your deck, plus an additional card for every coin you possess, so at least the four top cards of your deck. Uh, you can play the top card for free, or you spend coins equal to the distance of the top card. So if you play the third card, you pay two coins. Uh, the other cards are shuffled back, so you don't see the order. Uh, you Well, you see the order originally, but your deck is shuffled afterwards, so the order is no longer valid. And then Cleaver. Cleaver is another Crown Splitter. Also generates a lot of Crown Splitters, because for 1 power and 11 provisions, he also has Intimidate, so he gains a point for every uh, crime card that you play. You also spawn and play Shakedown, uh, 3 profit and 3 boost on the card that you want. Um, so you trigger the Intimidate on Cleaver as well, and you can increase this card's Intimidate by 1 for every adjacent Crown Splitter. So if he is in between 2 Crown Splitters, he has Intimidate 3, which is very good. He also have, has a 4 coin fee ability where you spawn a cleaver's muscle on his row so basically giving you a 25 percent uptick on your coin expenditure because uh, cleaver's muscle is a five power shielded crown splitter and then last but not least we have siggy Reuven mastermind a very complicated card but a very powerful card indeed probably one of the most powerful cards in the game right now even though we have a lot of new powerful cards that we gained as well four power for 13 provisions and on deploy you look at collusion so the crime card that we just saw and a random unit from each gang from your deck that is still remaining it is a unit so keep in mind that you can't play two crime cards with this unit in one go aside from the fact that you could also uh, play furco the sculptor from this card um and then you play one of those cards, so including Collusion. If you pay the Tribute of 9, you can play two of those cards instead. You're not forced to play Collusion and another card. You can also play two units if you want to. And on top of all of that, the Tribute costs two less for each unique gang category you control. So if you have five, five cat gang categories... Jesus, I can't talk anymore. Uh, gang category is a difficult word. Um, you can pay the Tribute for nothing, uh, so it's free. If you have four, it costs one. If you only have one, it costs seven. Uh, so keep that in mind. It's a very costly card if you don't have any cards on the board. But you should have always uh, some units on the board, I think. And of course, the stratagem is the Tiger's Eye. So you gain five coins on order. And then our leader ability is Lined Pockets, where we gain an extra coin for every crime card we play. And we also have a six charge order ability, where we gain a coin per charge. So it uh, can help with Bincy, it can help just giving you a little bit of extra coins if you're lacking uh, something for the tribute abilities. And with that, we're going to head straight into some example matches. 
All right, first match of the day is against Inspired Seal Northern Realms. Okay. Guess we'll see how uh, easily we'll do this. We have Collusion, but we do not have Siggy. So usually I'm tempted to not to mulligan away the Collusion. Because um, we have enough tutors to get it. Um, so let's do that. And we get Horse and Senior. Okay. Not a bad starting hand. Uh, we do not start, so we don't get the extra five points. We get Sentry and Envoy, which is... This is going to be a Malutala deck, isn't it? I'm going to put Sir Skewertooth on the board um, without Tribute, just to see what happens. It can't get killed. Aha, uh -huh. okay. It's a deck like that. Fine. Veiled, so I can't poison it. But what I can do is tunnel drill them down. So let's do that. Because next turn I'm going to start using crimes. So they could also stunder my... Uh, is it boiling oil, maybe? Nope. And maybe this is salt. Ah, and that's Margarita. Um, so they're going to lock my tunnel drill. That's fine, I can still kill the um, Aratusa student um, with Tavern Brawl. Because they're actually pretty nicely set up here, so I'm going to just Aratusa student first and then Margarita. There we go. Aratusa student goes down. I could transform the tunnel drill into a lackey, but I don't think that's useful now. Siege tower. Okay. That is fine, so that gives me a turn to set up uh, the Eternal Fire Disciple. Just another spend it on the board. That gives me still only two gang categories. Um, but it's fine. It's fine. It's not too much of a problem yet. I could use Shady Vendor to double that up. Um, that's exactly what I'm going to do, because I might get... Um, what's it called? Bloody good fun. If I put them up front, I don't get bloody good fun. I do get even tight plunder, which could get me another gang category. Field experiment. It's salamander as well, so might as well do this. And I can double poison something now, so I'm just going to spend that final coin on the eternal fire disciple. And we got Chapter of Wizards, which is going to give them a rune word into a ranged Aratusa student. I have four gang categories now, um, so I can just steal the Ban Art student. And I think I'm going to do exactly that. So I'm going to steal this bad boy. I'm going to let the... the the value tick anyway, so that's fine. And we're very far ahead and our opponent can't really do anything against that, I think. I could still double poison the Aretuza one. They're gonna keep going, are they? Okay, they spend it, so that means we're gonna get a spell inbound here. Yeah, so reset it. So that's now up to two. They need to spend two more cards to get it up to four, and even then they don't have a Banard one. I'm gonna pause here. This is a very weird flex. Because if, even if you manage to put her up to four, which is still two more turns, so you need to spend at least one more card to get her up to four, because she'll end up at four at the final turn. Okay. So none at four right now, but they could resurrect her and get her to four. Unless I banish her, but I don't have any banish cards. Okay. So that gives us... Full card advantage, uh, even two card advantage, because our opponent has a card down, and we won the last round. Mutants make is something you really need to keep. Um, I think this is just an ideal hand, I'm just going to keep that. Mutants maker has the two categories. I'm not, I'm not... no. I was thinking maybe I can, I can push here, but I, I don't want to give them the opportunity to build up mages. And they won't be able to do that here. And they waste the chapter of wizards that way as well, because it, it's going to be gone in the last turn, the last round. I think we got this. 
been really aggressive with Sir Skewer Tooth there as well. And just stealing that one student was also really good. So two and three. So that gives us the confirmation that the Bannard actually didn't count towards them anymore once it moved to uh, to our side of the board. I think I might even start with Azar Java just to protect our gang categories. Um, and we have Bart as well. What am I still missing here? So Bincy is still in the deck, uh, but I don't want to pull Collusion here. This is good because Little Bird gives us an extra category. I could get rid of one of the fist decks because I have Furco. Oh, I don't want to grab Collusion, okay. There we go, because we're guaranteed to grab Collusion anyway. Rafford's Vengeance. Okay. I don't know why he... I think they accidentally double tapped there. That was not really useful. I'm... So normally I would go for Azar Chavet first and then Poison. But the Raffords is going to kill the defenders here. Uh, so I'm going to lose a bit of my setup. But it's not, not too much of a problem. And I'm going to lose a coin as well. It is what it is. Shani's going to resurrect the uh, Ayatuza student. So that's going to be up to four now. Uh, nothing I can do about that. So might as well just poison the Raffords Vengeance again. I still can do that, right? Yeah, there's a second fist deck. There we go. Thinning out the deck quite nicely. And we have a crown splitting on the board. Keeping an eye on our um, gang categories in general. Uh, Bart is not really useful to put down. I have Blind Eye Tide Cloak. Tide Cloak is probably better because I don't have any other Tide Cloaks than Bincy. So if I don't pull Bincy. Okay, so little Bird. I'm going to put Tide Cloak on her and then just boost Furco. And that gets rid of some of the coins as well. We get Gerhard there. There's not much I can do against Gerhard. They're trying to get another rune word, I think. Um, although, they, did they just press him? I wouldn't have pressed him just yet. Because you saw my tunnel drill. So I don't think there's any options still there. Um, and that's a waste. Because you can't reset an order ability now. Okay. And Amphibious Assault is a warfare card, so that's not too much of a problem we get. Okay. Alumni, but again, they don't have the damage, so they don't get uh, zeal, so it's all going to be boosts. Okay. Um, I can just slowly set this up. I'll do uh, Bart first, and then I'll protect Bart in a minute. Um, I could actually just boost him by two. Yeah, just boost him by two. Because otherwise I'm going to waste the coins on Azar Javed anyway. Do they have an answer to Bart? I don't think they have. And then I'll just sweep with um, Sigi, because I'm going to have all categories on the board. Aside from Blind Eyes, unless I pull the Blind Eye with Vivaldi Bank, which is also an option. I'm going to have to think what my final card is going to be. Maybe even Vinci. Because if I play Vinci and Collusion... I don't get the blind eyes. Ooh, what the fuck just happened? That was Bart that they just put in my deck. Okay, I'm... I don't have an... Well, I could use Vivaldi Bank to get them back in the deck. So I'm not gonna get, get extra coins now, so I might as well use... Um, Azar Javed over here. And create some defenders. Um, and maybe even boost one of the defenders by three. There we go. So this, so it puts away a card from them and from us with the same power or less back in the deck, but they can get their own card back. It does also, it does also reset the ability, I think. Um, I'm hesitating what I'm going to do here. I could, I'll Mutants Maker first, because that gets me two categories. Which cards do I want to get here? I'm going to risk it. So I'm going to... Pull. Oh, I could also do blind eyes because I have everything then. I think Bincy is going to be more points. So like this. Um, 
and I can just boost her, which is probably a bad idea if they still have a tall removal part. I'm gonna play two more crimes, so if I can set up... I also don't want to get rid of the Solomon, the, uh, uh, the Mutants Maker, because it's a Fire Sworn. I could transform one of the... Um, the Scarabs into a cut-up. It's fine, because we have the Defender there. And then we set the cooldown. That was not a good... I not use the boosts. Do they feel like they're going to lose anyway? That was a really weird play. They're doing some weird things. Some weird things. I think they, they're, they're fine with losing. I don't know why, but... Let's get this one transformed into a cut-up. So that gives us Tide Cloaks, Crown Splitters, Cut-ups, and Salamandra. So that's four categories. Do we have a card that really needs to... No, I could just do Blind Eyes first. It's gonna be fine. Even with all of those points on the board. We're gonna be fine. And they could have done more. They definitely could have done more. So the range is at 9 right now. Ooh, they need to shuffle something back, yeah. That was not ideal. Was it? They kind of lost points there. So, next up is Mutant Ma Mutants Maker. That's going to give us 3 coins and the Salamandra tag. I'm going to spend 2 coins here. And that's a 5 point boost. Next up we have... Yeah, I'm going to play Cleaver first. Uh, I could Intimidate 2 on Cleaver. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, intimidate 2 on Cleaver, and then we get another 5-point boost here. And then we get Siggy. Uh, Siggy, I have 5 categories, so Firesworn, Salamandra, Tide Cloak, Cut Up, and Crown Splitter, so I don't even need to pay anything. So I'm just going to pay the tribute, uh, and then I'm going to do Blind Eyes and Collusion, because it's the only two cards left in the deck. I have three coins left for Blind Eyes, uh, well, for the Shady Vendor. I have two Salamandra units, so I can deal six damage. I can do Collusion. Oh, the Fire Sworn went on the melee road, that's annoying. But... And then we can hit for six. Spend two more on this... Yeah, little bird, but then I should have put Cleaver on the back just to be able to spend those coins, but definitely way more points than our opponent here. There we go, victory. Next up, we have Nilfgaard. Nilfgaard with a technical decision there. Nilfgaard got some very fancy cards in this update as well, so we might see some troublesome changes there. Um... Ah, Bincy is fine to start with. I'll get rid of one of the pull the strings. Double even type plunder is also fine. I can use the little birds. And for once we actually start, so might as well start looking for some cards. We don't get Furco the Sculptor, so we don't have a second poison, so I'm gonna get rid of Fistek here as well. Okay. Bincy and Tiger's Eye. There we go. That's why I have Bincy. Ooh, there's a Wanderer in there. Sunset Wanderers are in the deck. So that means that that is um, a um, snow drop deck as well. I really need to include a Purified in this deck. I could in Tim, well, Immune Sir Skewer Toot. Ah, it's not necessary just yet. I'll just start generating some damage, some coins. Even Tide Plunder, some of both. Uh, failed Experiment has Poison. But Eternal Fire just generates way more, it's by far the better card. Unless you really go full poison, of course. Field Experiment is better. Then we get Northern Wind. Ooh, another Madoc. Okay, we can do the same thing as we did before, then. Um, and I can pretty much guarantee... Yeah, so if I put... Mutant's Maker is gonna over-generate coins. Um, but, so Skewer Tooth is immune. So I can just pay tribute here and immune Sir Skewertoot. So I still have a chance of losing that Fire Sworn Zealot. But right now there are three categories on the board and I can just yoink the Madoc again. If you haven't seen that match, that's probably because I lost it and I didn't include it in the... 
in the video here, but there we go. That's to on Vinci. So, okay, great. So now I can yoink that Mad Oak. Because I have three categories on the board. Thy Cloaks, Ground Splitters, Fire Sword. So we can yoink the Mad Oak. And immediately, I'm going to immediately trigger it just to get rid of it. Because otherwise our opponent might be able to replay it. And I don't want them to replay it. We're at max coins now, but we do have little birds we can transform into something that we can use. And start uh, boosting some cards. There we go. <laughs> An immediate surrender because they lost the Mad Oak. Okay, last but not least, another Nilfgaard Imprisonment this time. Uh, I don't think Imprisonment got any changes, right? So it's just for them to have some lock options. Um, I could start with Vinci again. We have Collusion, but no Deekstra here. I'm always getting rid of a Collusion anyway. Just in case we get... And we can even get it with Furco. Um, Tavern Brawl might be a tad too early. Ah, we can pull it with Furco anyway. Uh, Fist stack might be nice. Although, we don't really need it at the moment. Double bird! Double little bird, okay. Um, I'm gonna grab the coins and just go with Sir uh, Skewertooth immediate, immediately in immunity. Because uh, that's generating a nice amount of points. And that still gives us just enough coins to use the Shady Vendor. Because we need four for that. And he gives you one. A vial of forbidden knowledge. Um, so that's just eight points. We can just do even tight plunder, actually. No, let's start with Shady Vendor. Because I want to see what I'm getting here. Damage coins or Fire Sworn Zealots. Fire Sworn Zealots is actually better than you might think. Because I get extra categories for that. So even though it's the weakest cards of the tree, I couldn't have done the damage anyway. Um, but it is better for me, because now I have three categories on the board already. So if there is another Madok, I can yoink it immediately. Unless they kill the Shady Vendor. Which is definitely also an option. Tree is also a good amount to have, because if you then play Little Bird, you immediately have like a four point boost for uh, each two coins that you spend. Not that we have a lot of coins left at the moment, but still. So there we have Duchess Informant on Shady Vendor, which is going to be useless because they don't have coins. That was a weird move. I think they're just... are they tossing away cards? Although a Duchess Informant isn't just something you toss away, is it? I'll put a little bird on the board just because I can. I'll make her a Tide Cloak. And then get um, two points on the Fire Sworn Zealot here. Well, four coins, just two coins. I think that that's enough. Jan Calveit, so they order their deck from best to worst. But I need to play another card, which is annoying. They have the benefit here. Um, play another even tight plunder, then um, it's going to be the easiest way. I'm just going to focus on generating as many coins as I can, which is not going to be a lot. The uh, Oxenford Naturalist is going to be the best option. <laughs> But if they do want to push, um, I'll see soon enough, but I'm guessing they won't. Okay, there we go. Did expect that. Um, we end up at nine cards because of that. So we could generate some coins before we uh, move into the final round. Just to get a little bit of carryover. Um, so if we can get the candle, that would be nice. No candle, but a Bincy. Try and keep double fist stack, maybe. Mutant's Maker is fine. I'm gonna keep that pulling the strings because it generates coins. And I'm gonna get rid of the fist stack. Okay, we got Siggy. That's good. So I'm just gonna generate coins then, I think. So I still have another pulling the strings here. So I can grab it with Furco if I ever want to. So I'm just gonna give myself eight coins. And that's even enough. I don't need more. We get a Nairomancy, so that's also a good mulligan option. Oh, it's a cultist deck. Oh, further knuckles. I need to push. If it's a cultist deck, I need to push. And I am not set up for pushing. That's useful information, though. Um, I would have not probably done this if it... Okay. 
Let's start with us a job at done. Okay, cultist deck. I need to be really aggressive because of the fact that the cultists can really spiral out of control. And if I don't do that now, um, they have a long round to just finish that off. So just highlighting to me that that was cultists was probably not the best idea. And there we go, we get defended immediately. And we get a lock. A destruction on one of the defenders here. I'm still going to do horse and senior. I was going to do it on the two defenders. Um, because then I kept the salamander tag on uh, Azar. But now, yeah, I'm just going to do this. So this means that for every crime I play now, I get four damage and one point. And an extra coin. But of course our opponent has options to deal with that. So we're going to see where this ends up. On which side of the spectrum this ends up. So we get the Eternal Eclipse. So that's the scenario card. I'm going to have to do Eventide Plunder. Which is good just for category wise. Because um, I get Salamandra again even. Or Tide Cloak. I'm going to do Salamandra here. And immediately poison the field. And I shouldn't have put the failed experiment there, but that's that's fine, I guess. Master of Ceremonies. So yeah, we're gonna... You're, you'll just see the spiraling out of control. I'm gonna try and deal with it as best as I can, but... Um, I have three categories on the board, so I need... Uh, three coins to pull off Siggy Reuven Mastermind. Um, I'm guaranteed to grab Tunnel Drill. Or... I go the, the complete opposite and use Bincy. I think that's probably even a better option. Uh, so this, pay the tribute, uh, Bincy and Collusion. Bincy in range and then Collusion just goes. And that's it. Now what am, uh, am I going to get with... I think Tavern Brawl might still be the better option, or of course, um, Fist Tech. Vigo is playing on other cultists, and we get another cultist, and our failed experiment is hurting a lot here. Um, I'm gonna do Cleaver over here, and I'm gonna boost the failed experiment again just to avoid it getting killed, and then trigger Cleaver twice and sadly we're not killing those cultists it's really sad to see but we're not killing cultists we get put a grass on cleaver that is ooh, that is huge he's getting a double assimilate trigger there uh, but he's not gonna get enough coins to actually trigger cleaver i also didn't really need cleaver so that's there's that as well uh, Vivaldi Bank. What's the best possible option? I think Fistek is still, for some reason, the best possible option. Uh, I'm gonna get Little Bird first. Um, I can still get a Blind Eye with her. So, let's get Blind Eye. Then get a single coin and just boost the Field Experiment again. To 10. There we get banishments. How the hell did that do damage? Damage the lowest power infused enemy unit by tree. Okay. That was annoying. You could still lock that, by the way. Ah, they lock Bincy now. Okay. Um, Mutants Maker first. That adds another tag, by the way, because I don't have Fire Sword on the board just yet. Um, and I'm gonna boost the mutants maker so that's six points for every two coins that i spend and then the final card is gonna be i think ever tavern brawl actually has this over uh because that's gonna be five two yeah so five one one so seven points that's the same but that you generate more coins with um oh boy 
This might actually be um, the killing blow for us. I don't think I'm gonna... Yeah, they're gonna be able to trigger the um, cleaver there as well. So I need to do 20 points. I probably could do 20 points. But what am I gonna get? Uh, so 5... I get 3 profit, but I don't get any coins from the profit anymore, so... I'm still gonna do 6 points with the little bird. But I'm not going to do enough with um, the rest, so I'm going to go down a card here, which is not good. That was the most ideal board state, by the way. So it's really... Cultist is almost unblockable if you're not uh, prepared for it with a Purify and a Koyalti Heatwave. And even then, the, the initial trigger is enough to uh, do a lot of damage. Okay, this is going to be really awkward. Um, Conjurer's Candle could be a good, good fit. If I maybe get something like Tunnel Drill. Okay. Still doable. It's not, it's not impossible to deal with. Just gonna play passively so they don't have anything to interact with just yet. I'm gonna play Tunnel Drill. Just because I could double it then. Oh boy. The Illusionist. And it is a cultist infused illusionist. After this card is played, damage the lowest power infused enemy. There are no infused enemies just yet. So there's that. And this is just, yeah. It's escalating again. So, sadly. Ooh, wait. I'm gonna tunnel drill. Um. I can still kill the Illusionist, which also... Oh, it doesn't actually boost. Let's just boost the Tunnel Drill a little bit there. But I'm not, I'm not gonna win. I can still use um, the Shady Vendor. Oh, fuck off. Yeah, okay. It's done. It's done. That's too bad. Um, I could still oh, hit for three. Hit for three, uh, but it's not gonna help anybody. Um, okay, yeah, I'm just gonna be enough to spend my coins, but it's not gonna be enough to finish this off, I think. They probably still have to. Oh no, that's a purify. Maybe. Maybe. Um, one here and one there. Seven points, they will be able to do seven points. That would be really stupid if they can't do seven points. Oh my god, they can't do seven points. <laughs> okay. That was a good bleed then, holy shit. I think that showed off the options with this deck quite nicely. You have like a big threat with Bincy that the your opponent needs to answer, otherwise it's a huge amount of points on the board. Um, there's a lot of crime-related shenanigans that you can do in this deck. Uh, a little bit of poison option, uh, Tavern Brawl also really good for tall removal if you really, really need it. Um, can definitely go 10 points or higher. And then you need, just need to be keeping an eye on your gang categories. You want to have as many different ones as possible on the board. We even managed to put six on the board uh, at the very end uh, in the second round against those uh, cultists. Um, and you can see how much benefit that gives. Little Bird gives you six points for two coins if you have a full uh, gang category board, which is really, really good. That's the only card, I think, that can do uh, triple the points of the amount of coins that you spend on it. It is cooldown, of course, for good reason. Um, even Tide Blunder is still a very good card to get you extra categories, which uh, also factors in the ways that you can have multiple categories in one turn. So Mutants Maker can give you two in one go, uh, even tight plunder if played through shady vendor gives you two as well and then of course Fur furco the sculptor can do the same thing with playing himself as a crown splitter then even tight plunder and giving you another category over there so you should be able to get 
four categories in two turns, which is a really good start to just start spamming. And then your final card, or at least played in the final round, should of course be Siggy Reuven. Uh, collusion is a huge amount of points because you can also use Siggy as a setup for Collusion. Even if you need to spend a lot of coins, Siggy can give you an extra gang category that also factors into Collusion if you play the unit first and then Collusion. So uh, don't forget to uh, put them in that order as well, so Collusion needs to be lost. Uh, and Bart of course also gives you some extra coins for every gang category that you play after he's on the board. And there we go, the King of Crime deck. And with that, I'm going to take a little break. So thank you guys enormously for watching. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Gwent. There's going to be more to come. This was the King of Crime deck. Next up, we're probably going to do another Syndicate deck. I have another idea that I haven't really seen people play, but it does factor into one of the newer cards. So definitely people will have played it. I just haven't played enough just yet. Uh, but we're going to be doing Syndicate. And then we're going to just look into all the new cards that we got. And just work from there for some new deck ideas. So remember to also check out this deck on the Playground website. Using the link in the description down below. You can upvote it there as well. Because as always every bit of support is really really appreciated. I am saddened of course by the news that Gwent is going to end in uh, a little over a year from now uh, but that does not mean I'm gonna stop making videos so expect at least one more year of videos from me and uh, we're gonna be supporting this game as long as it gets support from CD Projekt Red so thank you and also for watching and I hope to see you in the next episode of Gwent Edge. goodbye and stay nutty